Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome co-CEO and president, Peter McKay. Hello, everybody. Thank you. So uh, I want to thank Paul for uh, covering me this morning. I met a lot of you guys last night in the Partner Pavilion. You guys showed up a little bit late today, but thank you for coming. We got, uh, as you can see, we're very excited about our Microsoft Alliance and the cloud announcements we've had today. So lots of great stuff. Yesterday, we uh, guessed and we talked about our partnership uh, with VMware and Sanjay Poonin. We had Frank Palumbo to talk about our partnership with Cisco. And so last but not least is our partnership with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. In HP, we've had a, HPE, we've had a long relationship over the years. But in October of 2016, we announced an even deeper and broader relationship with HP. One that was over and above the development initiatives that we've done, but also a go-to-market partnership. Where now HP, HPE can now integrate Veeam into their other solutions, their hardware solutions for them, their salespeople, but also all their channel partners. So, and that in a very short time has been a fantastic partnership. So it's my pleasure today to, uh, to, it, to invite up the Senior Vice President of Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Bill Fieldman. Bill. <laughs> It is a yeah. longer walk, <laughs> I know, come on here. over here. So yeah. um, we met a number of, uh, about six, seven months ago, yeah. and, and uh, we always get into the football conversation. So I want to start with that. You live in Denver. Well, yeah. You go back and forth into uh, to and the West Coast. football is what we're going to start talking about. That's here. what that we're going to talk about. Yeah. You're a, but you're, a, Hewlett, you're a, a Packer fan. That's right. That's right. You live in Denver, but you're a Packer fan. Why yeah. is that? Well, I don't want to carbon date myself here, but okay. I'm going to. Right? Okay. So I started uh, with the Packers back when Bart Starr and Ray Nitschke and Lombardi. Okay. Woo. That That's 1968 back. for some of you guys who don't, don't, don't know that. Google it if you don't know. Yeah. And so I've been a Packers fan uh, 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 since then, and we've had up years and down years, not unlike uh, – just, Your team. Well, I we've had right? more up than down. Just well, so you know. Yeah, so, well, look, we can talk about how. Uh, don't yeah. go into the, the <laughs> deflate gate and deflate blah, blah, gate. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, I can throw a deflated football. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> okay. All right. How many Packers fans are out there? Cheeseheads, oh. come on. It's like three. Yes. Yeah, how many Patriot four. fans are out there? <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you very much. You lost that yeah. battle. No, 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 no. So you've been really busy. Yeah. You've got you've done a lot over the last six seven months. You acquired Simplicity. Yep. You you acquired Nimble. Yeah. You've got a lot of things going on. Tell me the the rationale of the acquisitions and how they fit into the the portfolio. So before I before I uh, start, uh, uh, Nimble people, are you out there? Yeah. Woo! All right. More, more nimble people than Packers fans. Yeah, that's, that's it. Which is good. That's so good if you can me. convert them over to Packers fans, yeah. you'd be okay. Yeah, we'll talk later. So, uh, you know, it's a, if, so first of all, Peter, I mean, I think uh, the storage business industry is obviously changing. I mean, if it's, you know, the, if it's not going to the web, we've, uh, we've thinned it, we've deduped it, we've compressed it. Uh, we now sort of provide uh, always-on availability. And I think what Hewlett Packard is doing is actually driving the transformations within the, within the business. We're really excited about SimpliVity. And absolutely excited about Nimble. You know, we just closed it um, yeah, a just, couple of weeks ago, yeah. right? And the there's a lot of Nimble and Veeam people, uh, and that was certainly our, part of our thought process. That was always a really exciting, probably one of the the, the top partners we've had, we, and we continue to have. So it's, yeah, it's great. It's been been a great partnership for us. Excellent. So when you think of uh, Veeam, you've, you've uh, as, as I said earlier, a lot of good success that we've had. The partnership has been very strong. And then the big announcement we've had in, in, uh, in October, yeah. but the momentum has really taken off between the two companies in the field, uh, lots of deals closing, bigger pipeline. We, need, yeah. we always want more and more, but how do you see this over the next couple of years playing out? Well, you know, I think we, what we see is that uh, sort of customers have moved from, you know, talking about availability to talking about always on, right? And so, and I'll, and I'll talk about this in a, in a couple of minutes, but you've got to sort of think about um, provisioning data protection and provisioning availability when you're actually provisioning the application. Mm -hmm. 
So I think that story around application availability is what's actually driving the business. And we've had a, always a very strong technical partnership, as, yeah. you, as you mentioned. I think actually now allowing HP resellers to actually sell Veeam as part of the overall solution is just going to drive the business um, like, like uh, nobody's business. Yeah. So it's, it's fantastic. It's gone really well. Oh, yeah. So I think a lot of people would love to hear kind of how you think of data protection and mm -hmm. how that business has gone. So yeah. I'm going to turn it over to you, let you walk through it. Let me walk through my own slides. Excellent. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. See you in a bit. All right, everybody. <clears throat> how are you? So <clears throat> you come to a lot of vendor conferences, and invariably, the pitch or presentation goes something like this. See if this resonates with you. The world is changing. You are ill prepared for that change. The good news is we have the unique solution to prepare you for that inevitable disaster that's coming. Please sign here. Press hard, you're making three copies. Have you heard that presentation? Yes? That's, that's what I was going to say. Thank you very much. All right, so I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about uh, change, but I do want to reflect on sort of the, the video that came up about the, about the kids, right? And um, my iPhone is turned off for the, for the comms people. I remember not that long ago, actually, when this was a phone. Do you remember those days? Now, here's how it goes in my house. I call one of my kids, daughter-in-law, does it matter, of that sort of generation, I get nothing back. I can't leave a voicemail because their voicemail boxes are full. I text them. Right after the call, I get an immediate response. I return the call. When I get the text inbound, what do I get? Nada. So what we're announcing today as part of Hewlett Packard is a phone plan which has no cell service, only data. <laughs> now, all kidding aside, what did we do without Google? Now, I don't need Google personally, because Mrs. Philbin is always right. There's no sense in me actually having to check Google. But when these things don't work, and that's one of the things I found interesting, the kids didn't say this, when the phone doesn't work, their lives are over. That's what we've moved to. You've seen this, right, at the airport? What's this? What move is this? This is the Uber moment. I'm waiting for the Uber guy. I'm, I, I, I can't deal without Uber, right? Or this, you've seen this one, right? It's not so, it's a FaceTime, right? And invariably, you've seen this one, I'm sure. I can't put it back here, but you've seen this one? Phone in the back, back pocket? That is the, does this phone make me look fat in my pants? This technology has gotten to a point where always on is got to be always on. Now, when you think about the technology, do you think about how it's protected? My phone goes to iCloud backup. I don't actually even think about it. Actually, I actually have two iPhones for high availability, of course. I'm a storage guy, right? They have the exact same apps on both phones. I buy an app on one phone, it appears on the other phone. I take a picture on one phone, it appears on the other phone. We don't actually think about high availability, data protection recovery, because it's an expected outcome. That are the, that's the children we are raising, ladies and gentlemen. We're enabling them, because they don't have to think about it. So why is it then, with all the data growing and speed and scale increasing, and you've seen these numbers, right? 26 exabytes, the move to all flash data centers. Why is it then that we have to actually think about data protection in our data centers? Let's think about this for a minute. You go on Amazon or you go on Azure, you buy something. What's the first thing, an electronic item for sure, what's the first thing that pops up? right after you put that electronic item in your, in your 
in your uh, basket? Do you want the, the recovery service? Do you want to sort of get the extra protection? You're in Best Buy. The pimply face, you know, just out of high school attendant at the counter says, when you buy an electronic item, hey, do you want the service recovery for this? Because this thing's going to break like tomorrow and you need service recovery. Mortgage. Mortgage insurance. When you die, do you want to have your family kicked out of your house? Or do you want to have them protected? All of those are sort of transactions that we just normally expect, yet in the data center, the last thing we think about is data protection and data availability. Now let's accept for a moment that one of the reasons is, is because it's hard. It's a different organization. It's, it's like something that no one wants to really think about and care about. I was at a customer in Australia a couple of weeks ago, and I asked them the question, and I ask this question all the time, I said, have you ever had a disaster where you had to sort of restore your data? And uh, the customer says, nope, never had one. So the rest of the conversation was going to be very hard because that's usually the tee off point for the conversation. Oh, yeah. And then you start talking about natural disasters and tornadoes, and then you eventually try to sell them something. So this, I said, this was not going to go easy, right? So the assistant to this grand poobah says, well, you know, Joe, we had this uh, little problem with our VM farm. And I said, what problem was that? And he goes, well, we put up 5,000 new VM VMs, but no one actually told the backup administrator who had done it. And we couldn't recover. I thought to myself, that sounds like a disaster to me. But I never want to correct the customer. Then we started talking about how we can sort of protect the data uh, along with our partnership at Veeam. So we, the primary storage providers, we have a moral obligation to make this process streamlined, simple, like your phone, like a web service on Azure, uh, et cetera. And what's really interesting when we sort of take a look at the, the roadmap from Veeam and the partnership that we also have with Azure um, is that we're actually doing that. For the nimble people in the, in the room, you know that we've got a, a service in RC that's called Nimble Cloud Volumes, which allows you to extend Nimble into the cloud, but easily managed uh, through Azure and um, uh, Amazon. And we're also announcing, you guys are hearing it first, actually, we're also announcing uh, our cloud bank service from store once. That's our disk-based backup target, where you can actually replicate an instance to the cloud in any S3-compliant uh, object store, whether it's Azure or Scality or you, know, you, pick your, you, pick your favorite, uh, you pick your favorite destination. So that is our moral obligation, is that we've got to make this stuff you know, essentially easier. I predict that we're going to get to a world as an infrastructure provider where we're no longer seen and no longer heard. We're going to talk about application provisioning, application availability, application protection. In a real hybrid IT world, whether that's running on-prem or off-prem, you shouldn't care. That resonate with you? Now, some of you are nervous about that statement I just made. I'm quite sure. I, I could just feel muscles tensing uh, in the audience. A few of you probably said, bull crap, that's never going to happen. But that's actually happening today where customers actually don't care. I don't know where my application is running internally. I have Office 365. Is it running in, inside of a Hewlett Packard data center? Is it running in Microsoft? I don't actually know the answer to that question. And I'm an executive of the company. It really doesn't matter. But when I know I've got a problem, I know it's provisioned, it's replicated, it's backed up. It's not going to matter. The SimpliVity acquisition was all around bringing compute and storage to the application in an always-on uh, format. Now, the way you do that is different. That's what we get to do. 
We get to make that happen. And whether it's Veeam or 3PAR or Store One's properties, et cetera, our obligation is actually to allow data protection availability to evolve as fast as our application, or as far as, as, far as our customers, uh, fast as our customers want to consume uh, the data services that, uh, that they do. Let's also remember that in the past, it was really, really easy to protect our data. You had a business model that went like this. You had a data growth that, that went the same way. Logarithmic function, you were good. I was at a customer uh, last week in London. 120 petabytes of storage. 40 of those petabytes were Hadoop. 40 petabytes. Not protected, not available, business critical. Hadoop has moved from a science project to running businesses because they've been able to eliminate a lot of the transactional database costs um, out, of the, out of the enterprise by moving it to Hadoop infrastructure. The Dutch tax system records a license plate every time you enter and go off major roadways. At the end of the year, they send you a form, which is your tax bill. I wish that worked this way in the United States. If you claim a business car uh, expense, they know if you've been driving that car on the weekends. And you guys think NSA is bad? <laughs> that data is growing exponentially, and that data has to be available because the Dutch tax system runs on Hewlett Packard. So what are we, uh, what are we doing with, with uh, Veeam specifically, right? You know, and so there's really, there's really two things. So from, from my perspective, the best place to actually recover your data is on, the, is on an array or a homogeneous environment where you store the data. That's the fastest recovery mechanism. Uh, it is the way that you can amortize that equipment in using for DevOps or, or uh, some sort of analytics that you run against the platform. So, so some sort of replication model is the right, always the right answer. However, Replication is not a backup. Why? When you make a boo-boo on your first site and you replicate it to your second site, and we do it very quickly these days, the, the boo-boo travels fast. And let's say you don't notice that you made a boo-boo until two, three, four weeks later. Replication is not a data recovery mechanism. It is a way to actually instant recovery when you know. So that's why we've got our Store Once product line, our disk-based backup products, which together with our replication management technology that we call Recovery Manager, actually enables you to not only take an application consistent backup between like devices, and, uh, for now including uh, 3PAR, but very soon including Nimble, and make a copy of that in a synthetic full uh, on store once. Then together with our partnership with Veeam, you can do an instant granular recovery technology with the Veeam Explorer and actually bring your, 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 your services back online, including a hot, a hot restore. That's done by profile, by click, by volume. Very, very quickly, you're going to establish, um, establish a data protection uh, scenario. The second thing that we're going to announce here at the show is uh, actually the Nimble has, has, has recently announced a secondary flash array as a replication target for Nimble. As I said just a minute ago, it actually offers a homogeneous replication to replication target and actually gives you the capability to use that as a dev test or in a pinch actually to use it uh, in a production environment should your primary site go down. It's also a great target for Veeam, where Veeam wor workloads backing up something that's other than HP, you can actually use Veeam to actually back up to, uh, uh, to Nimble, which is a majority of the business that we do today between between Veeam and, uh, and, and Nimble. 
Now, I've been uh, at this quite a while. I have uh, lived through mainframes are dead. I've lived through client server to web. I've lived through um, tape is dead. All of those environments, by the way, are still, are, still, are still here. So those of you that are a backup administrator or you're involved in data protection for your businesses, I don't, uh, certainly don't want to leave you the impression that, you're, that you need to go find another job or be an Uber driver. Although I'm thinking that might be my next career, career item. What I do want to leave you with um, is the following, which is more and more our customers are not having our first conversation with us about technology, LUNs, tape, RTO, RPO, all of those things that we're very, very comfortable in talking about. What our customers are coming with us is an application problem or they want to stand up new applications. And they're talking to us how's the best way for us, to, for, for us to do that. Our obligation in talking to that customer about an application, we're the number one server company in the world, we're the number two storage business in the world, is to ask them a question about how they um, plan to make that application always on, always available. Part of that is a disaster recovery story. Part of that is a backup story. Part of that is a recovery story. I travel about 400,000 miles a year, give or take. And the number one question I ask customers when I'm with them, right after the disaster conversation is, how many of you have actually tried to do a recovery of your data? How many people do you think raises their hand and knows that answer? How many people have tried to recover the data in the audience? Put your hand up. Looks like 35% uh, would be my. Here's the follow-on question I always like to ask, by the way. How long did it take? I, a, a, a while. One young lady told me six weeks. So the point of, point of the exercise, guys, uh, folks, is that um, we will do, do, do our customers a, a gross injustice if we're not talking about their application issues, their application provisioning problems, the way they, they choose to sort of run high availability, the way they should do recovery. And the very best way to do that is a combination of Veeam uh, and uh, Hewlett Packard uh, enterprise uh, assets. In this very short amount of time, uh, Veeam and Hewlett Packard have actually exploded our relationship. Strong technically, as I mentioned, but now strong business-wise. We're very appreciative of the, of the partnership um, between the two companies, and we're really appreciative of the joint customers that we have. And we're really excited to have Nimble join uh, the Hewlett Packard uh, family. I'm happy to all the people in Hewlett Packard. I hope you have a great conference, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, great, Bill. great job. Oh, yeah. Thanks yeah. for having us. And and you're the only one I know that in a keynote used boo boo, twice in a in a keynote. Did I say boo boo? Twice, at least twice, right? I didn't curse though. No, you didn't curse. Thank you very <laughs> much. Everybody. We love the support. Thank you. All right, we got the next crew coming up. Thank you, guys.